Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to be doing back-to-back -back new releases today. Uh, there's a band I'm excited about and somebody that we've checked out in the past has tossed out some new music this week and I figured we could check out both of them. To kick it off, the one I'm excited about is Velja. We've checked them out, uh, actually we've also checked this one out in the past with uh, Sweet for a Sad Trombone, I think is what the song was called. I ended up checking out their debut EP called Modern Disbalance, which came out in 2021, and I've been stoked for some new music ever since. And so, they released some. Today we're going to be looking at the track Tatova. So, let's see what Velja is bringing to the table today. Very ambient, lots of space. Not quite at full volume either, so we play around with some volume dynamics. There's a heaviness to it, harmonically. We got a 5-4 going on here. Very noisy. Cool effect on the guitars. Yeah, this is good. That snare work, the vocal melody from the last section. Playing around the time feel. Yes. Layered harshes and cleans. Is there a glockenspiel? Oh, you know, it might just have been this synth pad. That swell into it to really punctuate this sentence. The 
the time signature about this song is interesting. Wait, is this the outro? Ah, dang. Yeah, okay. I thought that song was a little longer, but also I didn't realize we had been listening to it for five minutes already. That went by and had so fast. So yeah, um, first thing I want to talk about, I think, is the time signature. We kick the song off with like, uh, you start off with a five, yep, five, four. Takes me a little bit to get into this groove because the syncopation isn't something I would expect in five. It kind of pushes towards a four with this extra beat at the end of it rather than grouping it up into like a two and a three or a three and a two, which are more typical for uh, more typical grooves for a five beat phrase. Um, we push out of that and we go into a four, four, and then we lean into a six, four. Uh, I thought this was really interesting. The, what I think is the chorus is in six. Uh, towards the end of the song, when I said that this song goes to some interesting time signatures, it, we were in the six moment right there. There's a few sections in here, though, where I can't quite get a grasp on what's going on time-wise because we just don't spend enough time within them. By the time that I recognize that something's off and I begin to count it out and try to figure out what's going on, we're moving on to something else. But much like the opening, where the inflection points aren't quite where I would expect them for the five, that's kind of consistent through a lot of this track. We see some interesting ways to divide up the number of beats per bar, and that basically removes all the shorthand. A lot of the times that I get comments, wow, you pick up on time signatures so quick. It's because of the shorthand, there's specific rhythms that tend to get used often within specific time signatures and rarely in anything else. When I hear those rhythms, I say, oh, this is probably that time signature. It takes me a bar to, to figure it out. And usually by bar three, I can say, oh, we're in six, eight or whatever. You know, it's, it's because there is a, a language to music. Uh, and that language has a lot of uh, common denominators to it. Ideas that get reused over and over and over within different circumstances. This band operates in a different dialect, basically, as far as rhythm goes. And so I can pick up on all of it. It just takes a little bit more time to do that. Um, yeah, I, I have to have like a translational element to my listening experience. And I really appreciate that. It, uh, it's really cool to hear fresh ideas come out of familiar time signatures. And what I end up feeling through this song is a bit of progginess in the way that they utilize rhythm. And what I find most interesting about this is that it comes from the drums. When you listen to the guitars, a lot of the guitar work here is textural and rhythmic. It leans into the groove. In fact, there's a lot of places in here where if you listen to the most foundational guitar line, because sometimes we do have a melodic guitar idea, but you listen to the guitar that's just playing chords, they typically sit on one chord and you get a rhythm on that one chord. That chord might move every four bars or so to follow a progression, but it's there to primarily create atmosphere and rhythm, not to do anything melodic or really pitch-based. It's a foundational element to create a floor for other elements 
uh, melodies or harmonies or flourishy ornamental stuff to shine on top of for them to stand on this this ground level. The guitars give us the rhythms I expect for these time signatures. They're a bit groovier, so they're rhythms that I would typically associate with something adjacent to, but not directly, gent, that side of progressive metal. But the general idea is when I listen to the guitars, I'm like, okay, this makes a lot of sense to me. Then I listen to the drums, though, and the drums are so spicy in the, the rhythms that they're bringing to the table. Uh, and when we pair this, more interestingly, with the vocal melody, where the vocals in uh, have inflection points, what parts of the bar do they say with just a little bit more bite, a little bit more punctuation than anything else. And that is what drives a lot of the phrasing of these uh, bars as well. And so between the drums and the vocals, we end up with something that creates a bit of rhythmic contrast against the expected rhythms that I get out of the bass and guitar. It's a very cool combination of sounds that I absolutely love and keeps the song feeling fresh moment to moment. It's probably what made the song feel like it went by so quickly because I was constantly reassessing what was going on. I never really had a moment for my brain to relax or chill out or to just say, okay, I understand this section, let me just soak it in now. I was just always calculating on things, always focusing on different aspects, there's always something new going on. And I suppose when, when my brain isn't given a, a moment to relax at all like this, I don't have a chance to focus on the passing of time. <laughs> uh, but I really enjoyed that aspect of the song. Um, and before we move on, just the drumming in general is really awesome. Um, there's a few fills and patterns in here. There, the snare gets some really cool stuff. Uh, yeah, just like the drumming as a whole really stood out to me on this track for a lot of reasons, and I, I greatly enjoyed that. The other thing that stands out to me are the vocals. We have clean and harsh vocals. The harshes, they're, they're harsh vocals. <laughs> I don't really have much to add to that. Uh, they're very well done. I enjoy the places where the harshes are doing call and response against the cleans or that they're going off at the same time. There's one moment where the clean held out this really long note with a little bit of flourish. There's a little like a what well, you know in guitar term would be a bend, but skipping up to uh, another note and then resting back down on where we started. A little bit of flourishy stuff like that. And the, the harshes were just underneath that just laying down uh, you know, the lyrics at the time and creating some rhythmic stuff. Um, I just love all that. But primarily what stands out to me is the clean vocals. Because of the harmonies that are, well, because of the harmonic information in the melodies, the chords that the melodies explore as juxtaposed to the chords played within the guitar, the guitar gives us some pretty standard metal ideas as a foundation to explore from, and the vocals take them in quite a few different areas that are a bit spicier. I love it. It isn't typical metal style melodies. Um, we had a quick little flourish into Phrygian mode for a second. There's some stuff in here that felt like it was borrowing from some classical. Um, it's it's a it's a varied palette that the vocalist is building melodies off of, and every section feels distinct, not just with the vocal delivery, of which there was a variety of that, more forward-placed vocals, more ethereal-style cleans, all sorts of different ways to sing with different coloring to it, but also there were so many different colors in the harmonic information, what kind of notes were being utilized, and it allowed each section to stand out despite the foundation, what the guitars and bass were doing, kind of being static throughout a lot of this. It's a great way to create something that feels very metal at its core, utilizing the simplicity of a lot of mainstream metal sounds, and then building complexity on top of that to create unique elements in every part of the track. I just... It's just phenomenal. Every single time the cleans came in, I was excited to see where they went. I suppose the last, well, that whole melodic topic, I suppose we can also 
expand to the lead guitar lines and the synth parts whenever we had a synth lead element they also explored some neat melody because i was like maybe i should talk about them too but i I just end up rehashing a lot of the stuff i talked about in the vocal bits the melody writing on his is just fantastic i think that's just the big takeaway there so this next section is going to be the atmosphere the emotion what what does this song feel like to me it moves between two modes and they both explore weight but in different ways we open up with harmonic weights it's atmospherically and production wise very spacious there's only a couple instruments they're high on reverb there's not a lot of um they're not very tightly packed not a lot of uh, touching each other as far as uh, you know being too closely contained it's a very spacious section with lots of room in the sound sphere it's it's a feeling of emptiness or of an empty space not necessarily an emptiness uh, of a person but an emptiness of space and it's paired with weighty chords right off the bat it is not happy it's not serene it's not joyous it's it's heavy i'm not quite sure what that heaviness is it was sort of ambiguous like, I'm not sure if it was sorrow or distrust or tired, being, you know, wary. But it was a weight. It was heavy. There was something lingering in the air that brought everything down, a gravity to the situation. This was typically juxtaposed with a heaviness of sounds, bringing in distorted guitars, heavy drumming, harsh vocals... Just really going for a meaty tone overall, something that feels unwieldy. And so they both feature this theme of weight, of heaviness, exploring it in two different ways. Um, oh, also for the first section, the spacious element to it, we frequently find that we have airy or ethereal style vocals there. Uh, just having a lot of air within the voice, uh, having a bit of a, a lighter tone as far as the vocal cord is, is uh, concerned, having more of a, you know, the breathing element in it. Once again, it's a it's an element of spaciousness, of, of room, right? There's not a lot of the sound, but there is a lot of this, this extra uh, element to it. And I don't know, it's, it's anger and defeat and all of this combined to a weight that, uh, a weight that, that stands on your shoulders. I don't know. That's what I got out of the song. I'm also trying to think about the time signatures cause we had quite a few of those. I mean, we kick it off with a five. And five is an interesting one because it could be read as extra or it could be read as missing. You know, four, four is the standard, which is why three, four to me always feels like there's something missing to it. But three, four also I associate with water. So depending on how the three, four is utilized, it can certainly go in both ways. And that's the cool thing about time signatures and just art in general is that everything's interpretive. But uh, being that this is a song about weight, of, of feeling bore down on, I almost wonder if there isn't uh, an element of loss in here. And then we could look at that 5-4 as missing a beat. I'm trying to remember back when I was listening to it, if it ever felt like the phrase was being extended or if the phrase was being cut short. Like if it's a 4-4 four, four with an extra beat or a 6-4 missing a beat. And I can't quite remember. That information usually helps me find out what the, the time signature is supposed to mean thematically. I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm running up against the wall right here. Let me hit some lyrics on this, see what's going on there, and maybe we can extract a little bit more information out of, a, out of what is going on with the music. So... 
The song's about a person missing their father. It kicks off. It says, I put in my suitcase on the road. Jokes, laughter, your walk, my anxiety. The way away from home. Where to? I don't know. This person just packing up everything in their life, physical or not, to leave, to get away from this place. Anywhere away from this home. They want to know how many minutes it'll take to get far enough away. But he says there's no stopping time. There's no more pictures of you. Are you even there? Are you a ghost? I love this next line. It says, don't shut up. Tell me how many years, how many steps, how much further. I really like this line. I don't know how direct of a translation it is. I don't know how accurate it's pulling. Because it is um, in Ukrainian. So I translated it the google translation was not great but deep l did a pretty good job of it again though i don't know how accurate it is or how how close to the intention but don't shut up how did google translate yeah google translated it the same way i like that line because as kids you know especially teenagers we say some stuff to our parents, right? I'm I'm sure I told my dad shut up a couple of times or just wanted him to stop talking. You know, whether it's an argument you got into or maybe you just had a bad day and you don't want anyone to talk to you or whatever. And then that moment when, when you just, when you want to hear their voice again. says, how much further do we have to go? Talks about uh, memories that um, she has of her father. How he's now a phantom. And the final stanza says, time heals. It'll all be over, you said. I know. I know time will heal, but I still remember your voice. And the bittersweet element of that, right? So yeah, the song is a heavy topic. It is about loss. And I think it even adds to some of the more ambient sections, the difficulty to put thoughts into words, the lethargy that comes about with sorrow and grief. Sometimes it's hard to even speak. Yeah, those are my thoughts. On a Tartova. What does Tartova mean? I don't know. Oh, it looks like it is a Englishification of a Ukrainian word that translates to dads, not plural, but in, in ownership. Those are my thoughts. Velja's Tartova. What do you think of this track? Anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to correct me on or expand on what I said? Anything like that? Give me your own thoughts, perspectives, opinions. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that in the description box, if you could, uh, head to the link tree. You'll find this menu, which takes you to my music, where you should support the channel, a link to the Discord server. Um, 
Velja is a smaller band, so I'll go ahead and add their links to the description box as well if you want to find their streaming services or their YouTube page or whatever. Uh, above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. If you head on over to their YouTube page, if you could do the same, or if you go to Spotify, Hardum, or whatever, y'all know the drill. Send them some love from this community. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.